Okay, now I'm about to do work on the tree branches and put it, make it darker. So I'm going to mix a big dark, big bunch of dark, which I could just go into. It's not going to be purely dark, but it'll be, it'll be fairly dark. So I'm going to start with some ultramarine blue. I'm putting it right next to the green that's part of the grass. Some ultramarine blue and some of this burnt umber. A little oil. More, more of the blue. By the way, if you're painting a tree in the daylight, you don't necessarily need to use any brownish colors at all. But because this is an evening scene and I'm trying to um, get this effect, um, I'm, I'm going very dark. Okay, so I'm starting to put this in, this dark mixture for the branches to show it in evening. Um, if this was a daylight scene, you wouldn't want necessarily want to use, say, a brown, or I say brown, it's, it's an umber color, or, or anything like that. Um, a lot of daylight has, you're going to find, you'll see gray branches, especially if you look at a tree up close, and you'll also see sometimes uh, something like this Naples yellow, especially if there's a lot of shadow. So where the tree, you know, when you do daylight painting and if you're outdoors, you squint your eyes. That's what they always say, even, even with what I'm doing now. Squint your eyes because you'll see the, the difference in the colors and in the values a lot differently. A lot, um, a lot, when I say differently, I mean they'll be... Um, more apparent than if you didn't split your eyes. So I'm going to just kind of try to jump all over on these branches because I might have it too dark. It might be that um, I need to mix a little lighter color in with it. And when I get into the branches, the little branches, if I do them, I definitely will use a lighter color. Oh yeah, this is my invented branch. I don't know if there's one here or not. But I felt like for the composition it needed to be in. actually crosses over. Just love the way these curves go with this tree. Generally speaking, a dark color, and this is generality, it's not a rule, a dark color should be thinner. I say should be, maybe I should say could be thinner. Um, that's what I was taught when I first learned to paint umpteen years ago. But I don't know, I think, um, you know, in art, there are a lot of things that people teach you that are like rules that can be broken.
Um, a few more darks and then I'm going to do a lighter. And this is not a case of shadow on this tree. The shadow um, has long passed, even though the sun hasn't really set. It's not, the shadow, if any, would be on the other side of the tree that we don't see. Definitely do want it to be dark down in this part. So what I've created with the lighter, with doing the branches, really I have created a road map for where to go. I don't need to look at my reference photo as often because I've got it kind of down. So now I'm going to mix a bit of a lighter. Let's see. Some of the Naples yellow. I'm going to go right to that same dark. And a little bit of burnt sienna, which is a reddish color. I've got it too light. I'm going to add a little bit of blue in it. Might make it look a little green, but maybe not too much. If this doesn't work out, I can always go darker, but I am going to definitely need to darken that sky. brush and just kind of squiggle it in with this color and go ahead and start applying it. And I can always grab a little bit more dark of the, um, I don't know why I have a hard time saying this, but it's the um, burnt umber. There's also a, which I don't use very much of, but there's also a, what's called a raw umber, just there's just as there's a raw sienna. I find that the raw umber comes out a little too flat. I may go back to using it sometime, but right now it just comes out too flat for me. Sometimes you'll see me kind of pushing the brush up into the paint. That's kind of to, to make any possible edges disappear. It's, a, it's easy to do with the hog bristle brushes, which um, you may remember from my previous class we discussed. With the sable or the imitation sable brushes, it's going to wreck them a little bit. Not to say I don't do it, but do that, but. It's 
speaking of those brushes, I do find that when I'm doing a landscape, I use much more of the bristle brushes. I just got a little mistake here, which I'm going to correct. It's easier to correct it now, or at least tone it down. here too. And I, I, I'll probably go over these later. Right now I'm going to need to mix some more color, but I was just kind of scraping it off. And I have to remember to go all over with this. To show it in other parts of the tree. branches I don't know where where they actually originated some of these you know it, the, looking at the photo it's very because it's so dark it's very hard to tell which limb some of the branches came off of so I'm continuing with these tree branches I just mixed a whole bunch more of the of color um, and trying to put it all over again I'm going to have to go over and pretty soon darken the sky that's going to be one of the difficult things for this to go I mean it won't be difficult on these large open areas but on some of the areas where there are more branches. I'm making this trunk a little bit more bumpy than it actually is. I think you might be able to say that this is kind of a flat type of painting or going to end up to be, which I like. Um, not super realistic not super representationalism. So I'm just at this point mixing color with my brush as I feel like I want it. Because sometimes you can use the edge of your brush. And that one might have might be too thick, but we'll see.
So for the places where I want it to be darker, I'm just going back to my ultramarine blue and my umber. And just, I mean, they're, they're not necessarily going to be as dark as what started out, but that's okay. Trying to curve the edge of the brush occasionally. One thing about some of these colors that I'm using, the blood, the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber, is that they dry very quickly. So by tomorrow, although I'm putting it on fairly thickly, but they might be ready tomorrow. Um, not ready, but I mean, they might be able to be touched without. They might be able to be touched without um, getting it on your hands. Not that that's important for this. Sometimes it's very important if you're going back to a painting the next day. Trying to wiggle my brush a little bit as I go along, just to get some of the bumpiness of the tree. You're going to notice that I've put, I started out with a very dark color on the tree, and now I'm using a more of a gray color for the tree. And it just kind of happened that way. I mixed it light, and then I kind of liked it. So I might change it. Once I put this darker color in the sky, and possibly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the water, but once I put a darker color in the upper part of the sky, I might want to change the color of the tree to be darker or to be lighter. But I think it's going to end up being um, a combination. And there are going to be areas where I soften it too, like right here. 
I'm trying to do thicker paint on the tree, but I don't want it to be so thick that it creates a ridge. So I'll probably come in with my fan brush later. I say probably. <laughs> I don't know. And there are areas where I've left the lighter color just because I am going to come, I know I am going to come back in. Um, but once I, once, I'm probably going to come back in as I do darker sky. So I'm just going to get some of the branches started. That's going to be really the more complicated part of this picture. But I'm going to try to even out some of this brownish black, I mean this, this dark color on the tree. It might be too dark, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. I still like it though, I'm not, I'm not taking it out. And as I said, it's not representative of shadows because this, the sun is not on this. is the watercolor. So I might not do too much with that. But I'm not going to decide right now. I'll decide that towards the end. Right now it's really time for me to start mixing a darker sky color. Okay, well I, I mixed some darker color for the top part of the sky. I used ultramarine blue, a little dab of cobalt blue, black, and then white, and I mixed it in with the sky color that I had, kind of for continuity, which was basically um, white and a little bit of red and the ultramarine blue. So I'm going to try it out, and I've also changed brushes. I'm using a softer brush. This will allow me to get into some of these areas where... I haven't defined the branches. Now this I think is a little too dark, but I'm going to try it anyway. Maybe not. Actually, I'm going to mix a little lighter into a little white, which is titanium white. This is, I think this is what I'm looking for. It's hard to keep it consistently the same color, but it doesn't have to be. And I, I'm kind of going over some of these edges of the tree. Oops. This part's almost like doing um, a paint by numbers, <laughs> where you're going into certain areas. Okay, so I'm um, still mixing in some of this lighter but darker 
sky color, trying to get these areas, I, I'm going to think of them as corners, that are still the color of the um, sketch. The, the, they're very light. So this is kind of tricky. I've got a pile here, a little pile of dark and a little pile of a lighter color. So I'm just trying to get it in. And I, I'm using a sable type of brush. And I'm doing what I said is not good for the brush sometimes by pushing, like just now when I, I kind of pushed it like that. I'll try not to do that because I, I do like this brush. I'm trying to get these little corners. Here's some more. And part of the trick in this is not to pick up too much of the color of the branch, the dark color. And I need to go all over. One of my teachers, um, from whom I've taken several workshops, says you should be able to make the painting, a final painting, able to be your final painting at any point. I don't know. I strive for that, but for instance, if somebody came along and saw you painting and they said, I want to buy that, and maybe you weren't finished, but they liked what you had, so you had it in such a, you had it done in such a way that it could be your final painting. You might or might not sell it, but it's always a compliment if somebody comes along like that. I had that happen one time when I was in Maine, and I didn't sell it because it was my first time painting there, and I, I thought I wanted to keep that painting. I ended up giving it to one of my daughters later, but I can always go visit it if I want to. Maine is a really nice place if you ever get a chance to go paint there. Well, obviously, unless you're pretty hardy, you want to go between May and September. Concentrating on the upper part right now. I mean, I could have gone down here, but I'm trying to concentrate up here because that's where, when you look at the night, it's going to be, or the twilight, it's going to be the darkest at the top of the sky. these little tiny branches. So I just have to decide as I go along if I want to put them in, but it's better to paint them wet into wet. Because if you don't, they'll, it just won't look right, in my opinion. I mean, I guess you can if you want a different look. Now that little block looks a little dark, so I think I'll just lighten it up a little bit without having to make it the paint too thick.
remember to put a little bit of oil in with the paint mix. It'll, it'll just blend and mix so much better. I'm mixing the paint now with the brush, pretty much. I might mix a new pile, though, in a little bit. This is probably the part that takes longer. Getting the full design in took, was fairly quick. Sorry, I am turning my back to the camera just to get this little area. Okay, coming over to some other areas. And I think my color is fairly consistent in this upper area. That's what I'm checking for. So I'm still working on getting the sky a little darker and blending it in with the lower areas. One little difficulty I'm encountering, which might not be the end of the world, but it's where I'm, you know, getting, picking up pieces of the tree color. But like I said, that's not the end of the world. It's just a little, um, it makes it a little muddy. But if I try to be careful and wipe my brush, I can kind of avoid doing that a little bit or I can go over it later. But so I'm trying to blend it in with this color I have down below. And it worked pretty well over here. It still needs a lot more blending. So I'm trying to come down. And that's that color down here has a lot of white in it. So I'm just trying to blend it. And it's still, you know, standing back from time to time to look at the, the whole thing to see what, what's needed. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush because I've got these little corners that need to be filled in. I'm putting a little oil on the canvas so that it's thinner so that I can get in there like right here. So I'm, at the same time, I'm doing these branches, trying to do them a little bit lighter. I'm not sure how many of them I want to leave in. Probably fewer is better. I put these two in. I like this open space, but I think it needs to have something. But then I wonder if I need to put anything in here and spoil that shape of that space. But I'll decide as I go along. Um, trying to fill in some of these little corners. 
just needs a little bit of a light touch. Which you can achieve pretty well with painting, holding your brush towards the back, like this. So I've got a bunch of color mixed on my on my palette. Uh, just need to go back to that and correct that little mistake. Most of the time you're not going to find that a branch of a tree is perfectly straight. Of course I say that and then I could go out and look and see one that's perfectly straight, but it's nice to have curvy branches, branches that curve. So I think I'm going to put a few more of these little tiny branches in those spaces I mentioned. And I'm going to do it now while the paint is still wet. But I have to have a light touch. I don't want it to be at all dominating. I'm using my reference photo. If I decide I don't like these, I can always take them out. Thank you.